All right, now to help us break down what drove the markets today, we head out to the Midwest. Bob Iacchino, founder of TraderOutlook.com, joins us from the CME Group. Also with us from Chicago is Charles Babrinskoy. He's vice chairman of Ariel Investments. He manages the uh, Ariel Focused Fund, which uh, Focus present tense fund, which has produced returns in the top 10% based on a three-year average. Guys, thanks for joining us. Uh, let me ask uh, you, first of all, Charlie, I mean, we see kind of a mixed market today, but it's definitely not the kind of gains that we saw yesterday. Some people expected for the first few days. Uh, what, what's the problem? Is it all due to the kind of meltdown that we're seeing in commodities? Well, actually, we wouldn't call it a problem. You saw the Dow outperform the other averages, and that's an indication that quality is finally starting to outperform. And that's exactly what we think is going to happen in 2011. The quality larger cap names that did trail in 2010, we think are very cheap, and they did well today, and we think they're going to keep doing well. Bob, what do you think? I mean, uh, the Fed has to be having some effect on this market today. The commodities drop seems at least pronounced, if not severe. I think pronounce is a good word for it. There's a couple of things, in my opinion, that are going on specifically to today. I don't believe that the markets are fully re-engaged yet since the holidays. That tends to happen uh, somewhere around Monday after the non-farm payroll comes out. There's been some positive, upbeat economic news, at least in the U.S. The global story right now is that the U.S. is going to catch up, very much like what Charles said about the Dow. The quality is going to catch up to the emerging markets now, so it's a similar story. But I think that that doesn't start until we get this non-farm payrolls number. That's why the moves are pronounced. This is speculative profit taking, in my view, in the commodities, especially in the gold. Gold becomes investable a little bit lower than here. It's tradable up at the $1,400 level. You know, Zara was just sort of outlining a bunch of the headwinds that we face. She doesn't mention Europe. It seems like people have just sort of forgotten the troubles in Europe. Charlie, are they, are they behind us? Can we move on? Uh, for now, we can. You always have to measure fear. And right now, you're right, Matt. People aren't as afraid as they were. But we're back to modest growth. Greece and some of the other countries in Europe do a lot better with a little bit of growth than they do with a little bit of decline. So I think the financials are where you'd be worried about banks getting in trouble, euro getting in trouble. But for now, people really aren't worrying about it. Hey, hey, Bob, it's Dominic here. One of the things that we're talking about in terms of you're, you're seeing a chart of euro and dollar there. You know, with the euro, it's kind of hovering around this 132, 133 range here. Is there anything about what's going on with the currency market that we could see translate into the overall markets there in terms of commodities, equities, everything else? Or is currency just kind of like an afterthought right now? Well, I think it's definitely a secondary trade, but I'm glad you brought up the euro U.S. dollar down because I think euro U.S. dollar is going to be capped at no better, in my opinion, than 136, at least for the first two quarters. And there's a couple of reasons for that. The, there's been a trade uh, down here in Chicago, and I know it's been going on in Europe as well, that you buy the equities and you buy the euro. And I think that's gone away due to the headwinds you've spoken about that many traders have forgotten about Europe. I think the euro is the one currency, in my opinion, that I don't like in a stronger global economy and I don't necessarily like um, in a weaker economy either, at least in the very short term. So I think we're capped in euro, U.S. dollar. I don't love the dollar either. So you're really kind of looking at Aussie, Canada, and to a certain degree for the risk-averse yen as being the story for the first half of the year, in my opinion. I mean, easier to be a bull in this market? Is it logical? Are the fundamental reasons out there to be a bull at this point in your view? Yeah, I, I have to admit it is always disconcerting when you hear so many experts who are bullish. Mm. But the one thing I would point to is that the mutual funds have not been bullish. The flows have not come back into equities. One of the reasons I, I am so personally bullish is big institutions like pension funds have been selling equities. Individual investors have buy, been buying emerging markets, not the U.S. market. We've actually had flows out of large cap mutual funds. So that's a contrarian um, positive that does offset all of the uh, experts that are so bullish. Bobby, I, I wonder what, what do you think? I mean, obviously your window, your investment window is probably much shorter, but doesn't it feel good to be a contrarian? Well, I, as you said, I tend to look a lot shorter. My long term is three to six months. But if I look out for the entire year of 2012, I'd call myself a calf, not a bull. I, I'd say that I'm looking <laughs> like for that. somewhere in the mid single digits 
um, at by the end of 2012, only because, well, three real things. There are so many headwinds that we still have to get through, including the Fed's exit strategy, what you mentioned about Europe. Also, final consumer demand. I don't believe, I believe it will be there, but I don't believe it will be strong. We're not going to have credit expansion again. We're going to have cash and carry consumers, and I think that's going to disappoint a lot on the final demand side. And I'm also just very, very worried about the expectations of double-digit growth um, in the equity markets and three to four to five percent in GDP. Um, I think there's too much of a belief in that. So that's the contrarian part of me. But I do think the first quarter is going to be very positive. Second quarter, I'll say right now, all bets are off. Hey, Charlie, it's Julie here. What about this idea that profit margins might indeed have peaked, the, the idea that Adam Parker over at Morgan Stanley uh, talked about? I mean, if the job market does start, if jobs start to expand a little bit, aren't we going to see those costs expand as well? I mean, companies have been more productive. Isn't that going to decrease? We've still got a lot of excess capacity. Uh, the, our plants are operating at 70, 75 percent of capacity. Unemployment is still extremely high. We can have a big increase in demand, increase in revenue without big increases or even any increases in capital expenditures, in hiring costs. So no, and then the other thing you have to remember is companies have a lot of cash, they're buying back stock, and that improves earnings. I think that earnings are going to go up more than revenue in 2011. All right, guys, we're going to run. Charlie uh, Bobrinskoy and Bob Iaccino, guys, thanks so much for uh, walking us through the close Thank on you. this Tuesday. We appreciate it.